I absolutely love my rundowns from the Flying Knicks because the words they use are fantastic. Let's go to this. Stephen A. Smith lost his shit. Yeah, that's what they wrote. Well, when discussing Kawhi Leonard playing for the United States Olympic team, stated that Kawhi Leonard might be the worst superstar in sports and that owner of the Clippers, Steve Ballmer, should forbid, I forbid you, Kawhi Leonard, from playing in the Olympics this summer. He ain't wrong. If I were Steve Ballmer and I'm paying Kawhi Leonard $40, $50 million a year and he can't ever play, the dude can never play, then I might have to step in and say, yo, how can you play for Team Indiana and you cannot play for us? Let's hear from Screaming Steven. LeBron James is easily worth $100 million. He's easily, easily worth double. Easily. You know why? Easily. Easily. You know why, Andrea? Not just because of his greatness on the court. He's the marquee, the draw, and he shows up. He shows up. LeBron James is underpaid. You could give him $75 million. He's underpaid. This man is worth every penny. Giannis Antetokounmpo, worth every penny. Anthony Edwards, worth every penny. Steph Curry, worth every Every penny. And we talk about Kawhi Leonard like he on their level. He's not. He's on their level as a player. He's not on their level as an ambassador. He's not on their level as a marketer. He's not on their level as somebody who prides himself in being an ambassador for the game of basketball, promoting the Clippers, promoting the NBA, promoting everything. And then you have the audacity to literally want to represent Team USA. You can't even represent the Clippers. 60% 60% of the playoff games. But you want to play in the Olympics. And that's why I said, Andrea, if it were me, when he had that picture with that U- Team USA uniform, that would have been the closest he got to wearing that uniform. If I was Steve Ballmer, I would use my considerable resources. I would, uh, I would turn over every stone. I would do everything I can to make sure his ass don't play for Team USA. Because knowing him, he'll probably get hurt playing and won't be available for the Clippers. No, this is what the man has done for years. Uh, He's absolutely right. I mean, let's go back to it. Once he became kind of a star at age 26 with San Antonio, he played nine games at age 27 in 2019. He played 60 of 82 games, age 28, 2020, 57 games, 52 games. Then he missed a whole year in 2022. Then he played 52 games and 68 games. Going back to 18, 9, 60, 57, 52, a whole year missed, 52, 68. Hell, I don't even remember him playing this year. Boy, am I am I in agreement with Stephen A. Smith. If I were the Clippers, if I were Steve Ballmer, I would say hell no. In fact, if I were the NBA and I had any stones, I would say, hell no. You don't play. Look, I understand they are different positions, and I understand Kawhi Leonard would be a very valuable USA team member, and we're trying to win here. But I'd say, "Uh uh-uh. Give me Jalen Brunson, assuming that he's healthy. Give me him. Give me Kyrie Irving instead of him, instead of Kawhi Leonard, period. I mean, that's the way I look at this, period. If I am Steve Ballmer and I am paying the kind of money that I am paying Kawhi Leonard, I'm all in on it. Hey, this ain't your job. Yes, I understand. You are part of the NBA. We are trying to make the NBA fantastic. We are trying to make it a thing globally. We're going to try to have teams in London, try to have teams in Mexico. The dude made $45,640. $45,640,084 is what this guy made. To do what? Play 68 games not playing the playoffs? I mean, are you kidding me? Are you insane? Dude has made $276 million in his career. 
Now think about that for just a second. His average salary is fifty million in this contract. Are you insane? I'm paying you fifty million and you can't play, and all of a sudden you're going to put on a jersey of USA basketball. And we all know what's going to happen. Smith is right, or at least partially right. He probably will get hurt, or. Once the Olympics are over, between the Olympics in July and the start of camp in October, he will be hurt. He will act hurt. He will say he's hurt. He will have load management. He will complain, bitch, whine, and moan privately. Maybe not publicly, but privately. Man, this is a broader picture, though. And to LeBron James, I've said this forever on this show. LeBron James has squeezed out every ounce that he has now. Do we like the load management? No, it's stupid. Do we understand it now that he's getting ready to turn 40? Yeah, we do. But we all understand LeBron James has squeezed every ounce. Other than load management, he'll show up. Most guys will. But damn, this guy won't. You know, it's one thing to be a player on a team and a good player. It's another thing to be an ambassador of the team. It's quite another to be a face of the league and all the responsibility that that brings. And let me go back to James. Has there ever really been, outside of people's disagreement with him politically, has there ever really truly been any one incident that has embarrassed LeBron James? Maybe he's had a bunch, but they've been covered up. I don't know. This world seems difficult to cover things up. But there really hasn't been. And that's the task for Anthony Edwards. 22 years old, now we're seeing him. That's the task in certain ways for Luka Doncic. Nikola Jokic. But the thing about those guys is this. The thing about those two guys is they get to go home. Now, home may start to be back here in the United States, in mansions, things like that. I don't know. But they get to go back. To their country, the old country, as we would call it. And what you do there, there is actually some honor. There are very few dirtbags who can't wait to get a camera out to film a guy. That's the value of being a foreign player here in the United States. Now, Victor Webanyama may be different. Everybody knows him. He's 7 foot 20. He's not, he's more of a global guy. Jokic and Doncic are more regional guys. The countries they represent, more regional. France, big, sprawling, fashion. You know what I'm saying. But anyway, I got two words for Kawhi Leonard. My ass. And Stephen A. Smith ain't wrong. I wouldn't let that dude put on a USA jersey from two aspects. One, if I was the head of USA basketball, which apparently Grant Hill is, I would tell you to suck it, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Represent us better. And two, Steve Ballmer. I'd say, yo, $49 million average salary and you can't play 70, 80 games? Stick it. Suck it. You ain't playing USA basketball. Let everybody get mad at you. But at some point, you got to stand on business. You do. You got to stand on business and tell these suckers, you're not suckering me anymore. Screw you. You out. Uh, Yesterday... Former President Donald Trump has been found guilty on all 34 counts, convicted of illegally fudging business records to pay for Stormy Daniels in hush money. Nothing different than the $850,000 Paula Jones got from Bill Clinton, but I digress. We don't go after Bill Clinton. Why? Because we have a two-tier justice system. One that goes after conservative, i.e. Trump, and one that allows Democrats, i.e. liberals, to go free. Now, we got hush money. Eh. He becomes the first former president to be convicted on criminal charges. 34 felonies. Now, here's what I say. This is what I say. You may not say this, but I look at the big picture, the long game. If you're going to have a sham trial, And you're going to have 34 felony convictions. People are actually questioning whether or not he's going to be sent to jail. People are actually asking this. Well, of course he is. I mean, the judge's daughter has made allegedly millions off of Biden and his cronies. The whole thing is set up. You think they're going to stop 
at what? What are they going to stop at? The next move is going to be no convicted felon can ever run for president. That's coming in about five minutes. So two things are coming here. One, absolutely you're going to see Donald Trump be sent behind bars. No question about it, in my opinion. I mean, damn, he just got convicted of 34 felonies. That's not one felony, which makes you a convicted felon. That's 34. You know, $34 will still buy you a loaf of bread in this country. 34 bucks will buy you a McDonald's hamburger, fries, and a shake. Still, barely. But 34 convictions, sham trial, I don't know how people are even questioning this. I opened up Twitter today, and I saw, well, do you think Donald Trump will go to jail? Well, yeah. If you're going to have a sham of a jury, a sham of a judge, a sham of charges, a sham conviction, what do you think is next? Of course he's going to jail. We're going to ask Peter Ducey that question when he joins us at 9.50. All right, the big bad wolf is dead. Oh, Bill Belichick is the big bad wolf. And all the little sheepies are coming out from hiding. They're all coming out now because we can speak freely. Bill Belichick doesn't have a job anymore with the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick doesn't have a gig anymore in the NFL. The big bad wolf is dead. Well, who's the latest? Former NFL safety, Logan Ryan. He's spilling the beans on the New England Patriots and possible dysfunction in the great ones last year as the head coach of the New England Patriots last year's. Said there was a double standard within the locker room of the New England Patriots. And it contributed to a split among the players and former head coach, who? The big bad wolf, Billy Belichick. All right, let's hear a little bit from Logan Ryan. During that time, we dealt with the Aaron Hernandez situation. Um, and deflate gate, right? And I think that a lot of times it was like us against the world type stuff in terms of he kept everything internal. So I think we did, I did see the funny side of Bill that you saw at times. I saw the low lights and stuff he talked about of chewing guys out in film, but I also saw the light hearted stuff. So I think we had a great time. I had a great time there, won a lot of games. My last game was the Malcolm Butler interception. Yeah. I leave New England, right? Now that we get the stage set. I leave New England. The next season is the Philadelphia situation where Malcolm doesn't play in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And when I watched that documentary, I wasn't there right at this point now. So now I'm not, I'm ex New England Patriot. And I see the kind of the turn, right. Of the political statements coming out from bill, uh, supporting, uh, you know, Trump and whatnot. Yeah. And we said, we're not going to talk about anybody's own personal beliefs. Right. So I saw that kind of shook the locker room. Like, Hey, we're, we don't talk about those things. Why are you talking about those things? Right. Right? But times have changed. People want to, Talk about political views. Political views got into football. Yeah. People want to do commercials. It's okay to have your cell phone in a meeting. Yeah. So these things, employees, right, in the workplace, they're the, they're the man's change. I think as a boss, you got to understand that. And I think he did a great job to make time stand still for 20 years and get players to truly focus on what's important, great way which is it. executing football. And I well, you know, what a little bitch. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. And you can say times have changed, but in what world do you bring your cell phone into a meeting? In what world do you do that? In what world do you have to change if you are an intelligent football player? In what world does Bill Belichick have to acquiesce? Now, I will be in total agreement about what Logan Ryan is saying about political views. If you're going to say as a coach, and I coached a long time, hey, look, our political views, while you, I want them and you certainly can bring them to me, I'm not going to make any, and you should not either. Do not do that. That goes against what we're trying to do here. Because here's the deal. 
as the great Brad Stevens, the general manager of the Boston Celtics, and I had a long conversation about winning, everybody has to be moving in the same direction. And even, even when that happens, it is incredibly difficult to win. It is incredibly difficult. The thin, the line is like this thin over here is winning, over here is losing. And man, that thing, that thing can go south at any moment internally. And then to win, what do you got to do? You got to beat somebody else. So it's two-pronged. You're trying to continue to move everybody forward in your own operation. And you got to beat somebody else that may or may not be doing the same thing. And Logan Ryan's right. If you're going to say as a coach, hey, look, we got a lot of stuff going on here internally. Aaron Hernandez, the flake gate, got a lot of stuff going on externally. Donald Trump's the president. Other sports, LeBron James, others at the time were speaking out politically. Players that sit there and go, wait a second. I see all these guys speaking out. I would like to be involved in that conversation. But you know what? I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Internally, this is what internally means. I go from my business office, the locker room, the meeting room, to my apartment, to a restaurant with teammates, guess what? We're going to talk about things that you and I are talking about in the world. That's what a team does. That's what players do, period. So it's always being discussed. Then what happens is, hey, man, wait a second. We weren't supposed to speak politically, and here you are with your arm around Donald Trump. That's speaking politically. It's no different than in any business. Like, I sat there and I watched Jalen Rose act like an idiot. Stephen A. Smith act like an idiot when I worked at ESPN. Lie and say all this stupid stuff. All the while, I knew that me as a middle-aged white guy would be called up by the bosses if I even kind of sort of maybe tweeted or said anything political. So it's no different in this business or that business, or sports. It's no different. Everybody's watching. Everybody's seeing what Sam Hell, the leader's doing. Are you walking the walk that you are talking? Or are you a hypocrite? And the worst thing you can be, the worst thing you can possibly be around players is a hypocrite. Once the players deem you to be a hypocrite, you have lost credibility, and now you are screwed. And to me, that's exactly what this sounds like from Logan Ryan. The players lost respect because he didn't follow his own code. Next thing you know, you got a division. It didn't help that they didn't have a quarterback in the last few years. It didn't help that they had a defensive guy kind of sort of being the offensive coordinator, maybe the quarterback coach, a couple of his kids are still there coaching. You know what I'm saying? That didn't help either. I mean, I if you put maybe, maybe, let's I just this just hit me. Maybe just maybe Tom Brady kept Bill Belichick in line. You know, I said when Tom Brady was a free agent and the Colts were looking for a quarterback. Ultimately, they settled on Matt Ryan. But I said, look, when Tom Brady would walk into the building on 56th Street here in Indianapolis, the Colts complex, everybody would sit up a little straighter. They would have to, Tom Brady. I wonder if Belichick, on a daily basis, had to sit up a little straighter because he was coaching Tom Brady. Because Tom Brady, until, well, recently – has never been called out or public or or had the public come at him for all of his awfulness as a human being. I don't know. It's fascinating, though. You know, I've been in a lot of coaches' negotiations. I've been in a lot of radio, TV negotiations, and I've never heard this one. Nebraska volleyball coach, John Cook, he had an unusual, if not wow, request involving a horse in his contract negotiations. Here's what the coach of Nebraska volleyball, now you got to remember, 
Nebraska volleyball is mammoth. They played Memorial Stadium against, like, Nebraska Omaha in front of, like, 90,000 fans, the largest crowd ever to see a volleyball game. Nebraska volleyball is massive. I'm very grateful to Troy and our administration for their support and confidence in our Husker volleyball program. When Troy and I talked about my contract, I proposed that instead of an annual escalating salary that some coaches do, it would mean a great deal to me if Nebraska's athletic department would consider supporting me in purchasing a horse out of central Nebraska that I've had my eyes on. The horse, called number 415, was born and bred at the famous Pitzer Ranch in Exxon and is a once-in-a-life perf- once in a lifetime performance horse. We had purchased as a weaning by Mike Ray and then trained by the Ray family. Troy loved the idea, and while they couldn't specifically write that into the contract, the retention bonus will be used for number 415. I am honored that Troy has been supportive of my idea, and it means a great deal to me. Okay, I'm with you, big boy. So, really, this is, uh, in some ways, much ado about nothing. The coach wanted to buy a horse as part of his contract. The general manager, excuse me, the athletic director said, yeah, I can't really do that, but you can use this retention bonus, which is a ridiculous thing, for coaches to be allowed to get, by the way. It means if you stay here, we're going to give you a bonus. I mean, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, well, who cares? I mean, what are you doing? Anyway, the retention bonus will be used to buy this horse. It's a nice story, but the truth of the matter is it doesn't really matter. Eh. He got a bonus. He's using it to buy a horse. Raise your hand if you haven't used a bonus to buy a horse. I got a couple horses they're pretty good. One of them's pretty good. I didn't use a bonus. I just threw in some money. Eh. Anyway, moron, this is why I love the Flying Knicks. Moron, dipshit, Democrat senator from Pennsylvania. That's pretty good. Moron, dipshit, senator, Democrat senator from Pennsylvania. Bob Casey apparently doesn't think that transgender females who are biological men possess an inherent advantage over biological females in athletics. What he also, and you'll see this, doesn't understand, is that athletes train. Athletes compete. Like, a women in grade school shot put event is important to the women in grade school. A track and field uh, meet among high school kids is very important to the participants that are competing in that. A basketball game, be it an NBA final, a college basketball game, a Division three basketball game, a high school, a JV, a sixth grade, an eighth grade basketball game is very important to the participants. It's one of the great things about sport. It allows you to learn how to compete. It makes you work to compete, really compete, compete hard as hell. But this guy... As my guy said, moron, dipshit, Democrat senator from Pennsylvania, Bob Casey, doesn't see any of this. He thinks all sports are are exercise, calisthenics, really, back in the 60s. All young people should have the opportunity to enjoy recreational sports. Really? Everybody does have the opportunity to enjoy recreational sports, Bob. It's called going for a jog called going to the gym. It's called flying a kite outside. It's called, hey, let's have a catch. Hey, let's kick a football. Hey, run past patterns with me in my yard. That's recreational sports. Now, Bob, tell me who doesn't have the opportunity to do that. At 61 and a half years old, I can go outside and participate in recreational sports. I can do my calisthenics. Stretch one, two. What is this, 1960? Is that what this is? And have their personal dignity respected. Absolutely. There is a beautiful park over here. It's called Lee Park. Six pickleball courts. Eight, excuse me. 
Recreational sports abound. Nobody's going to care unless there's a tournament, whether you have a PP and consider yourself a woman or whether you have a JJ and consider yourself a man. Nobody's going to care except the father of a daughter that the dude walks in the women's bathroom with. Then daddy might care. And now Bob goes to this. Bob then heads down a direction. In a world where transgender youth face, here we go, face an inordinate or disappropriate risk of bullying, harassment, and violence, allowing transitioning youth to participate in athletics in their affirmed gender can provide enormous social and psychological benefits. Again, we worry about the 0.0.1%. So we're supposed to allow everybody, let me listen here, in their affirmed gender. So chicks becoming dudes should participate against dudes. I'm a dude, they say. Dudes becoming chicks should participate against dudes. Everybody should participate. Everybody would allow for the opportunity to enjoy recreational sports. Just participate against dudes. Doesn't matter. Look, I saw a dude transitioning to a woman part at Yale participating against the women. Bob, why is that, Bob? I don't know. Rather than stigmatizing vulnerable youth, I believe we can inclu- and should include inclusive and informed guidance that allows all students to flourish. Yeah, just go play recreational sports. Don't play competitive sports. Intramuros, go play with whoever you want. If we're talking about students, every school that I know, maybe they're not anymore because who knows why, maybe, just maybe, Intramuros is the place for you. There's a difference between recreational sports and competitive sports. In competitive sports, people work their uh uh-uhs off to compete. Huh. In recreational sports, people just play. We're out here playing. We're having a catch, a throw. I'll hit you fly balls. We'll play $5. Yeah. So, Bob, lick it, bite it, suck it. Um, Every day, James Franklin, the smiling con man of Penn State football, seems to involve himself in something ridiculous. He does. Like, One of the reasons I like James Franklin is because he was honest. He said, look, I hire assistant coaches with hot wives because I know they can recruit. Okay. Look, if you're a good-looking dude and you got some big old fatty, you can't recruit. You settle. Does that mean you're going to settle in recruiting for a three-star that you know you can get as opposed to a five-star that you got to go work at? Maybe. Does that mean you're afraid to call up Susie Rottencrotch, the hot girl down the street? And you settle for pure poly purebred, the beefy 260-pound one? Maybe. I'm all in on that from Franklin. But all this other crap from Franklin is a bit ridiculous. Listen to this. An ex-Penn State doctor was awarded $5.25 million in a suit alleging James Franklin's interference with regards to athletes' medical treatment and return to play decisions. A Dauphin County jury in Harrisburg awarded orthopedic surgeon Dr. Scott Lynch $5.25 million in punitive and compensatory damages. Testimony during the seven-day trial included former players of Penn State, doctors, athletic trainers, university system officials, and others discussing, discussing examples of injuries and medical decisions. Lynch said in a phone call with ESPN that he hopes the verdict will prompt an investigation by the NCAA which had had a policy guaranteeing independence of medical staff since 2016, there has not yet been one school punished for violating medical autonomy, he said. Dr. Peter Seidenberg, who worked for the Penn State College of Medicine for eight years and was a primary care physician who worked alongside Lynch, described an incident in which an athlete had a high ankle sprain, wasn't cleared to play, but Franklin was trying to influence the medical decision. We were being pressured to release this athlete. Former athletic trainer, I like that all these guys are former. Uh, Tim Breen testified 
about a March 2017 discussion about a player who said, who he said needed shoulder surgery. Franklin was opposed. He had a strong opinion of what he wanted to have done, and he tried to insert that into making us see his way, which was not in the best interest of the athlete. Interesting. The more I'm reading, the more I'm siding with the coach. He and Seidenberg also discussed a football player who attempted suicide. Uh Uh-oh. In October 2016, it was admitted to inpatient psychiatric care. Bream and Seidenberg described a meeting with Lynch and Franklin and Bedour, who is the athletic director, and others in which Franklin wanted the doctors to mentally disqualify the athlete who was still undergoing treatment so that Franklin could use his scholarship for another player. Huh, interesting. I don't see where a jury, if I were on the jury, there's got to be a lot more than this. I mean, if he just tried to interject, hey, don't you think he can play? Now, I don't know how strongly Franklin went. I have no idea. But what the hell? Five million for that? An NCAA investigation for that? I got to tell you, I don't see it. And I don't care. Look, the suicide thing, I don't. I would never do that. But as a coach, are you crazy? Hey, man, can he play? I remember I had a trainer. I should have sued her ass. We were getting ready to play. My best player needed needed help. She's like, well, no, I'm going home at 5. I'm like, you're going home at 5? Nobody goes home at 5. We don't practice. It isn't over until 6. But I guess in this world, I would be the bad guy in that case because I was looking out for my athlete. I wanted him to get treatment. He was wanting to get treatment. But the young lady hired by a complete moron named Jana Blaze, who is now the Senior Women's Associate Athletic Director at Northwestern, the worst human being, nonviolent crime division I have seen in sports. Jana Blay hired this woman. This woman didn't last very long. We got a real trainer in there, and life was good. So I'm just saying, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, by the way, President Biden's going to host the Kansas City Chiefs later today, and the Biden team is giddy. Oh, we hope Taylor Swift shows up. I guess others in the Biden team are wondering, hey, wait a second. What's going to happen with Harrison Butker today, senior White House correspondent for Fox News? Peter Ducey is going to join us coming up here at 940. We'll find that out, get Peter's reaction, of course, to the sham trial that went all the way to 34 felony convictions. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting what happens at the White House with Butker. Biden is too stupid to make a funny joke about Butker. He's not smart enough. His joke writers are bad. His writers in general are god-awful. So he's not going to come off as charming. He never does. It's a real opportunity, too, though. I mean, if he had his brain, his wits about him, he could be charming. He could defuse the Butker situation. But that's not his deal. First off, his wits are not about him. The people that write his jokes are not talented enough And frankly, even if they wrote a joke worthy of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, the old guy would F it up. It's got to be a very happy day, though, for the Biden administration. The Big Bad Wolf, a.k.a. Donald Trump, their political opponent, in a sham trial with a sham judge and jurors that were all set, convicted Trump. You know, it was actually, there was a time, I think, when people, including our own Clay Travis, trying to read the tea leaves, said, wait a second. The people that are on the jury are looking for more stuff, more information. That looked good for Trump. Yeah, I guess not. By the end of the night last night, it came in guilty. That's too bad. No, it's really too bad. Anyway, Peter Ducey's going to join us. My man, Nick is sitting right here. So the question begs, Nick, you as a hipster, you ever been cuffed? You ever been thrown in the back of a police car? You ever been taken downtown? You ever had to go to trial for anything? I've been taken to trial before, but that was like for some BS, like parking tickets. Um, No, but no, no, nothing ever like that. Wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You had to go to trial for parking tickets? Why don't you just pay well, the tickets? To, well, I went to court, yeah, and I paid it I paid it there. Or uh, what's it called? Uh, driving, uh, speed limit. I got I got uh, pulled over for that. I went to I paid there too. 
That's the only thing I really done though. Hey, hey, what's it called? Driving a speed limit. I'm hey, driving here. How about a speeding ticket? Yeah, speeding ticket. Exactly. It's really it though. I'm not. Hey, I'm not. Hey, I'm not, I'm not I, I was driving. I was them driving fast tickets. You know what I mean? Hey, what what are we doing here, huh? They weren't having it. They weren't having it either. I was trying to tell him. I was like, I'm one of you. It's okay. He's like, nah. I'll be right back. And he came back I, and he had a freaking receipt that big. And it was a freaking speeding ticket. I was so mad. Hey, I'm one of hey, you. Uh, Let me off. What are you talking about? I'm one of you. Then I would say, what are you, a cop? What are you, a prosecutor? What are you, a damn judge? You're one of me. He had the, he had a, he had an Italian last name. I was like, yeah, you see my license. You see my middle name, my last name. My, my grandma's middle name is my, uh, my grandma's last name is my middle name. Still wasn't having it. I'm like, okay, screw it. Give me the ticket. And he gave me the ticket and I was off. And then a year later, because I kept yes. getting pushed back, finally I showed up to court. Yes or no, Donald Trump goes to jail. Yeah, thousand percent. Even Mayor Adams, he was just like, really? I got a spot right. I got it. Yeah, he's going to jail. And it's going to be great because when he gets elected as the 47th president, the White House mural of uh, the 47th president is going to be him behind bars in a suit. And it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for you that really painting to come that? out. You believe that? Do I believe what? That he's going to be elected president? I think I think this is going to be. I mean, me personally, yeah, hundred percent. Did you know that he's the he's the first person to be convicted in a New York State court this year? Because you know, Bragg lets everybody else go. Mayor Addicts lets everybody else go. So he's the first one. Congrats to Trump for being the first I, person. That can't be right. You talking it's about not, federal it's court? Important. It's not. It's I was going to say, that can't be right. I was going to say, wait a second here. Hang out well, here. Else, what are yeah. you talking about? Hey, thanks for being here. If you're an OutKick fan, you know we give it to you straight. Here on Don't At Me, we have a ton of fun. More content right here. And while you're at it, sack the hell up and be sure to hit that subscribe button now.